Natalie Wood, Bruce Lee, Notorious B.I.G. The killers of these people haven't been found to this day, but there are criminal cases full of questions and inconsistencies that remain unsolved for a few million years. Who killed the most enormous, cold-blooded, prehistoric monsters called the Megalodon and the Titanoboa? The investigation hits a dead end because it's hard to comprehend who or what could defeat those monsters. Eyewitnesses are long gone, and the evidence was destroyed by time. In this video, we'll reopen the investigation and find out how did a lethal dose of radiation end up at the scene? Can we trust the white shark's alibi? And most importantly, who killed the prehistoric mega predators? The Megalodon is the most giant predatory shark in the history of Earth. Its body was twice the length of currently existing white sharks, although some researchers assume it was four times as big. Megalodon's teeth were also twice as long as the teeth of its contemporary. And the bite force was equivalent to the fall force of a huge cruise ship's anchor that could weigh up to 11 tons. This allowed Megalodon to easily dissect the chest of a small whale. When a Megalodon saw its prey, it rammed it, trying to break its bones and damage all the vital organs under its rib cage. So poor creatures died quickly due to severe internal injuries. Although the Megalodon was literally a super predator at the top of the food chain, it went extinct, presumably 2,600,000 years ago. But who could have the nerve to attack this underwater beast? Let's dig into the list of suspects. Suspect number one, the white shark. You may say, what do you mean that can't hold a candle to a real sea maniac like the Megalodon? That small fry could barely escape its jaws, come on. I agree with you, it's weird. But the white shark didn't kill the Megalodon in the literal sense. The thing is, big white sharks started to gradually spread around the world, preventing the megalodons from living in peace. That's because both of the species shared the same taste preferences, small whales. Although the great white sharks were smaller in size than the megalodon, they remained as savage as any other representatives of this species. Their reduced size and increased agility could give them a head start. Whereas megalodon constantly attacked only from ambush and never dared to actively pursue its prey. It couldn't reach high speeds and had a very limited resilience. Perhaps that's how the monster died out, exhausted and horribly hungry. Or maybe suspect number two is to blame, and this is a supernova. It's something like a cosmic suicide bomber, as its explosion took the life of lots of prehistoric animals. The flash triggered rain composed of particles of a very heavy electron called a muon. It hit the atmosphere and contributed to climate change, and so began the mass extinction of large marine animals. All of them, including the megalodon, were irradiated and bound to die quickly. But it all sounds rather like some fiction. There's an assumption that the assassination was carried out by a real criminal gang, and that is the Tectonic Plates Clan. During the Pliocene epoch, the Pacific Plate collided with the Caribbean and South American plates. As a result, the Atlantic Ocean got colder and saltier. But it's more likely that this could make megalodons scatter around the planet, not kill them. And since there's no hard evidence, we don't have the right to prosecute any suspects. But the murder case of the Titanoboa is even more complicated. If the Megalodon was the ocean daredevil, the Titanoboa ruled the land. Even in terms of size, it was equal to the sea monster. If we compare the Titanoboa to a modern giant snake, the Anaconda, we'll see that the prehistoric beast was twice as long as its contemporary and four times heavier. Besides, its hunting method was very 
different from how modern boa constrictors do it by strangling their prey. The titanoboa partly dived into the water and suddenly darted to grab its prey with its massive jaws close to the windpipe. The center of the titanoboa's body was significantly thicker, which ensured enough space for devouring a big catch that could be found back then. So the question is, who would dare attack such a dangerous predator? Suspect number one, a cold wave. Yeah, it already appeared as the accused in the case of killing some dinosaurs. During the Paleocene epoch, modern Peru and Colombia had a tropical climate with high humidity and average air temperatures perfect for cold-blooded reptiles. And the warmer the climate was, the bigger they got. When the temperature started to drop, it was problematic for the titanoboa to support its metabolism. But it's hardly the thing that could completely wipe out the giant reptile. It's more likely that it was replaced by some smaller species that didn't have a problem with surviving lower temperatures. Meet suspect number two, coal. Have you ever heard of the Cerrojón Formation? Nowadays, it's the largest coal mine in Colombia. But ages ago, it was inhabited by the Titanoboa and full of lush tropical forests and rivers. The coal that can now be found in the region is, in fact, fossils of all the plants and trees that were once home to the Titanoboa. When its natural habitat started changing, the snake just failed to adapt to it. Even that is a mere assumption. I wonder who that third mysterious suspect is. And that is… what? Megalodon. Scientists believe they lived in different epochs, but all figures are very approximate. And it starts to look even more suspicious, considering there are no traces of any of them left. These giants' disappearance issue is researched as poorly as the world ocean. And this is exactly where those two could meet each other. Imagine that you're cold, have nothing to eat, and the world around you is full of radiation. What are you going to do? Go and find a better place. What if these predators just began migrating? Almost all species did the same throughout time. After the supernova explosion, the muons were concentrated in coastal waters, but radiation was less fatal at great depths. So the megalodon could have decided to relocate there and never return to the surface. These days, we can observe the migration of rattlesnakes on the Great Plains Plateau in Canada. Nothing is impossible for a reptile that senses danger and feels hungry. The titanoboa could have done the same, though it might have retreated to a different environment instead of forests. This snake lived near water bodies. In addition, there's a theory suggesting that it also hunted fish. Maybe at a certain point, the titanoboa decided to go underwater and migrate from Colombia across the ocean. Most megalodons could supposedly be found between North and South America. Actually, the quickest way to reach warm waters crossed the route that the titanoboa was following, willing to move closer to the equator as well. Most probably, they met each other somewhere around there. Let's try to simulate their alleged encounter. The gigantic snakes and sharks would definitely get into a scuffle. The megalodon's jaws would easily chew through even giant snakes like that, but I can't exclude the possibility that the titanoboa used to kill the gigantic sharks in response. And this seems even more likely, since the megalodon's skeletons that could contribute to the investigation were never found. There were certain clues, like a couple of backbones belonging to some huge fish, but forensics never proved that they had anything to do with the megalodon. But even that can be explained. In the stomachs of snakes, there's a special acid that helps the reptile take away calcium from the bones of prey by eroding them, and the remains of the swallowed body are eliminated by digestive enzymes. That's why there are no megalodon skeletons. That's all its fault. Or maybe both of them are guilty after all. 
The Titanoboa and the Megalodon could be the final factors that led to the extinction of both species, but if their deaths were caused not by space explosions or climate change, but by the confrontation between them, there's a possibility that both populations, at least very small ones, might still exist somewhere to this day. I decided to search for new evidence. There are videos showing an abnormally large shark that resembles the Megalodon on the internet. Yes, its appearance doesn't really match the composite sketch. But even if it's not a Megalodon, that could be its pup, which, like Nemo, didn't listen to its dad and decided to go to the surface. And nowadays, it can be attacked there by regular cachalots. Their ability to use echolocation will help them with good megalodon hunting. Meanwhile, pods of dolphins have their own personal style of killing sharks by ramming their gills to disable their breathing ability. This leads me to believe that megalodons most probably hide near the ocean floor, just to be on the safe side. But if the Titanoboa is still alive, why is there no similar video of it? I guess it's a matter of time, and eventually it'll be captured on camera when the snake comes back ashore. If we don't see the Titanoboas, doesn't mean they aren't there. Perhaps their migration didn't stop at crossing the ocean. The species could move farther from the equator and reach the tropical waters of Amazonia. Global warming is a menace to us, but the best possible outcome for the Titanoboa. If it adapts to the new world, it may choose to come out again and try its luck on the ground, where it will hunt alligators, raccoons, skunks, and of course, tourists. The case of missing Megalodon and Titanoboa is very complicated, and any help you can provide will contribute to the investigation. Who do you think could kill those prehistoric giants? Immense creatures we don't even know about? Underwater volcanic eruptions? Or is it all our fault? Mankind that contaminated the homes of marine life? Leave comments with your suggestions.